In this episode of Tech at Work, we delve deeper into three aspects of cybersecurity. One, how safe and secure is your data on cloud? Two, is the cyber risk more in an Internet of Things or IoT world? And if yes, why? And thirdly, why McAfee predicts we will see identity attacks via our social media platforms. This is Tech at Work, and I am Reema Tendulkar, your host from CNBC TV 18, and we are joined by Venkat Krishnapur of McAfee. McAfee is a device to cloud cybersecurity company globally. McAfee oversees 87% of the world's largest banks and 80% of the Fortune 100 firms. And Venkat Krishnapur is the Vice President of Engineering and the Managing Director of McAfee India. Venka, thank you so much for speaking with Tech at Work. I think that's the big question, right? We all save our data on cloud. Sometimes it's a backup, sometimes it's the primary storage device. How safe is my data on cloud? First of all, Rima, thank you very much for uh, hosting me. I uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, let me just begin by saying, uh, you know, how the, the uh, uh, you know, patterns have changed over the, uh, the last few years in terms of how people have been, uh, you know, uh, transacting with their data. and. Um, in order to reduce the uh, infrastructure costs, uh, today what we are seeing is a, uh, a significant move towards uh, the cloud, which means that the uh, enterprises are leveraging both uh, public as well as a hybrid clouds uh, in order to uh, you know, store their data and retrieve their data. Um, just from a statistical uh, perspective, uh, you know, what we have seen is a 23% increase uh, in terms of uh, you know how much data is being uh, you know transferred uh, and transacted uh, in the cloud, uh, you know from corporates. This is uh, based on the uh, threat assessment that we did, uh, talking to over 30 million, uh, you know, uh, or looking at the data patterns of uh, 30 million customers. The other thing that we've also noticed, just from a you know statistical perspective, is that uh, almost 21 uh, percent of that data that is actually transferred to the cloud uh, is actually very sensitive. It could be IP related, it could be a business uh, document, it could be something else. And uh, you know, the, 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 the reality is uh, we are seeing uh, close to about a dozen uh, accounts uh, you know, um, uh, essentially being compromised uh, uh, on a monthly basis uh, in, in the corporates. So I think the problem is getting uh, huge. Uh, you know, as much as we see, uh, you know, we all tend to think that uh, yeah, you know, we have data in, in Azure, AWS, uh, Google Drive, Box, they're all well protected. Uh, I think what we have to, uh, you know, be alert to is the fact that uh, uh, there is uh, definitely risk of uh, losing data if uh, you don't uh, have the right uh, means of protecting yourself. Venka, that brings me to the next point. I take your point completely. The cloud adoption is going up. Increasingly, we are storing a lot more sensitive data, 21% of the data, as, as your report suggests. Uh, but why are cloud accounts getting hacked? You said a dozen of accounts are being compromised. Um, why is that happening? So, um, you know, it's um, uh, you know basic uh, etiquette to a large degree in terms of how people need to uh, transact uh, business online. Oftentimes, it is very simple things such as, uh, you know, not uh, making sure that you have a strong uh, password, which is, uh, you know, oftentimes the case. So, you know, it's uh, uh, not too hard for people to uh, guess your password. And often, you know, what we have seen is there are a lot of people who tend to use passwords like one, two, three, four, or just password or no password, etc. And you know, these are uh, known to cyber criminals, so these are the first uh, things that they would try. Uh, they, they also have brute force uh, you know, so software that will uh, try and find out what the uh, you know, passwords are. What is a brute force software which can identify a password? What they could do is you know, um, uh, you generate a dictionary of uh, passwords and then uh, try and uh, you know, log into your account. And, um, you know, the other thing is, uh, you know, as much as your know, account may be saved, sometimes what happens is uh, your devices are not well protected. For example, you could have, um, you know, for some reason downloaded uh, um, a piece of malware which is uh, probably doing uh, keystroke logging. And, you know, the, the uh, criminal has uh, all the data that has your account, it has your password and everything else. So. You know, once they have that, they can log into a you know a box account or a Google Drive or whatever, and then uh, be able to access the data that you have. So, uh, 
you know, there are multiple ways of, um, you know, how you know, cyber criminals are able to get into your account in the cloud. So, you know, people who assume that uh, just because I have uh, data in the cloud and in a public cloud that's uh, well uh, renowned, uh, you know, I'm safe uh, is, uh, uh, is not completely right. Anyway, there's no such thing as it's stored in the cloud. What is the cloud? It's someone else's computer, and how safe can that be? But Venkat, I remember a couple of years ago, these celebrity photos were leaked. I think it was in 2015, after their iCloud account got hacked. What was the reason? Was it because their uh, passwords were not secure enough, or there was a phishing attack? The uh, methods that you just described are the most common ways of, uh, you know, how uh, cyber criminals tend to... Uh, go after the online uh, accounts, right? So the, uh, the important thing to realize is that uh, you need to make sure that you're adequately protected. For example, you know, regardless of whether it's AWS or whether it is Azure or whether it's uh, Google Drive or anything else, you know, uh, the real thing is uh, you've got to make sure that you know, the basic account itself, uh, you know, from a common configuration perspective is, uh, is well protected. So, um, and, you know, we have uh, products that will, uh, you know, scan through the, the account, make sure that, uh, you know, your password that you've set is strong. We also have, uh, you know, DLP for, uh, you know, when you're uh, transferring data to the cloud, um, our data leakage uh, uh, protection product could, uh, you know, swing into action and then uh, make sure that, uh, your data is encrypted and then, you know, there's no data loss. The most important step, of course, is, uh, you know, uh, you need to be educated as well. Um, so a couple of things, right? What, what, what is it that the uh, malware uh, guys are trying to do? Um, they're really looking at two things. Um, the vulnerability of the human mind and the vulnerability of the uh, ecosystem, uh, which could be your machine, your operating system, or whatever. And uh, what do I mean by, uh, you know, vulnerabilities of the uh, human mind? For example, a phishing attack is an example of um, how one could uh, easily fall prey to a, um, an attack. Um, for example, uh, you get um, uh, a message like uh, free gold uh, um, if you click on this link, right? I mean, you've got to be very suspicious of uh, um, uh, such emails. Uh, uh, the only way I guess uh, you will get free gold is if you find uh, uh, gold on, uh, on the moon and then, uh, you know, the value <laughs> of gold comes down so much that... Uh, you know, literally the, the, but you know, people have to be alert to these kinds of things, these frauds. Uh, th so what's really happening is, uh, this is what uh, we call as uh, social engineering. Uh, people are manipulating the human mind so that they click on bad links. And you know, the moment you click on bad links, uh, you know, you download software, it could be on your mobile device, it could be on your laptop, it could be on your iPad, it doesn't matter which device it is. Uh, but the moment you have, uh, you know, a malicious program running on your uh, on your machine, it could uh, hack into your account and uh, harvest your email addresses. It could take pictures of yourself. It could do keystroke logging, so it knows, uh, you know, it's sending information constantly to another uh, control center somewhere in some part of the world. So the moment you have downloaded malicious uh, software without your knowledge, uh, you know, the sky is the limit in terms of what the hackers. Uh, should be able to do. Well, there's no free lunch, so let alone uh, no free gold, definitely. But you know, McAfee assesses various storage devices, cloud being one of them. Which is the safest way to store your data now? Overall, if you know, when you look at uh, where you can put your data, the you know, public cloud is uh, certainly a, you know, a safe place to, uh, to store your data. Even, even as I speak about you know, the risks, what we're talking about are risks that are controllable to a large degree. And what you need is a common sense approach and making sure that you're uh, following the simple basic steps so that you don't fall prey. And the second thing is to make use of the right tools. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make is, you know, the cloud is an absolutely safe place to put your data in. And that's really where people are putting their data in. So, but it, in addition to that, what you do need to do is, of course, uh, have that extra layer of security that you know the, the standard vendors will not be able to provide. So nothing is 100% safe. The only thing which complicates matter in, say, a public cloud is there's very little transparency. It's not that you can go to the data servers and you know find out where your data is saved. But let me move on to the other point, that is Internet of Things or the IoT world that we're currently living in. So right now, my laptop, my watch, my phone, my smart, my home, it's all smart and it's all connected. So therefore, is the cyber risk more in an IoT world and if yes, why? And how is it, you know, how is my data being compromised more in an IoT world? Well, that's a great question, Rima. 
You know, when you look at uh, uh, you know the world that we live in today, uh, uh, like you just described, uh, uh, there are a plethora of devices that are interconnected, uh, uh, you know, to the to the uh, uh, network. And uh, what we're really predicting is uh, anywhere close to 50 to 60 billion devices uh, that could be connected, uh, you know, over the next couple of years. And what that really means is, uh, you know, just look at it from uh, you know a cyber criminal's uh, standpoint, right? He's like you know, the more the merrier. Uh, uh, all he needs is uh, the, uh, the more people per, and devices that pile onto the bandwagon. Uh, his statistical probability of being able to, uh, you know, make uh, money or do damage is uh, exponentially going to increase. And so that's really where the threats are because, you know, um, when you look at the devices themselves, it could be a, you know, a smart fridge, it could be a smart light, it could be a smart lock. Um, regardless of what it is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, these are uh, not devices that are traditionally uh, high in memory, compute power, and so on. So the, um, um, in, in terms of how you protect it, you need to make sure that you have a, a, an interface in between that is able to make sure that, you know, the kind of uh, traffic that's coming in, where the IP is, you know, is it a reliable source from which the request is being made, is the right person making the call, is it the right device that is trying to activate a certain device. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that need to be analyzed, you know, when uh, when you're connected, for example. But can I do this at an individual level or is it too complex and therefore I need to download any kind of software products which can secure all my devices? And if yes, if I can do it at an individual level, how can I do it? How do I secure all these devices and make sure you know the hacker can't so, attack all these many uh, entry points? So uh, the, I, I'll, I'll take the example of the smart home today, and uh, you know the gateway to the smart home is uh, usually a router. And uh, today, uh, McAfee has uh, something called the Secure Home uh, platform, which is actually a software that is built into the router. And you know these are different routers that we have. So what this is doing is constantly monitoring the uh, network data that is coming in. We use uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning and other uh, you know state-of-the-art technologies to be able to uh, understand what the traffic patterns are and also to ma make a determination as to whether you know the the devices themselves that are being uh, you know that are on the home network, for example are compromised or not and then we are able to make sure that the, the, the basic level of fundam, you know, uh, protection happens right at the router which is exactly where uh, you know all the devices get connected to so you know whether regardless of whether you have five devices or ten devices or sixty devices at home you know they're all as long as they're on the home network and they're going through this gateway uh, you know you you would be assured of uh, a significant level of protection uh, moving on, you spoke about social engineering where hackers kind of coerce the victims into giving up their passwords in a way or uh, the attack takes place through a malicious email which you called as phishing. How big a threat is social engineering according to you? Social engineering is the easiest way for a hacker to actually get access to anything. Let's for example look at a corporate network. I mean to a large degree the, the basic fundamental uh, protection that you need, uh, you know, corporates absolutely are conscious of, uh, you know, the uh, the kind of impact that uh, one would have if uh, uh, you were hacked, and you know that gets into the news is like is bad news, right? It's not, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort to actually uh, break into, uh, you know, to to a, a well uh, solidified uh, security environment. The easiest way is to actually uh, socially engineer or uh, um, uh, what I mean by social engineering is to uh, exploit the vulnerability of the human mind like I was just talking about uh, mm. you know a couple of minutes back which is uh, uh, you know you're essentially uh, 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 foxing somebody or uh, you know making uh, uh, somebody click on a bad link and then uh, enticing him with uh, all kinds of offers it could be you know it could also be fear uh, you know where uh, you get an email that says uh, your account has been compromised in this bank so uh, please click on this link and uh, you enter your password and banks and others will never send such emails and you know not everybody is aware right so uh, what happens is um, the moment you click on these links uh, um, you're you're falling trap uh, to the uh, uh, to the whims and the fancies of the 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 uh, the bad guys. You know, this uh, it's a double-edged sword, uh, uh, Rima, if you were to ask me. Uh, today, uh, uh, when you look at the uh, 
uh, kind of uh, malware pro proliferation that is happening to them. It's almost impossible for the human mind to uh, look um, at each file, file after the other, and then make a determination as to whether the, the uh, piece of malware or the file or the process that you're looking at is malicious or not. Our labs guys uh, get uh, close to anywhere up to four uh, pieces of new malware, uh, which are known as either indicators of attack or indicators of compromise. And uh, we get mm, four new pieces of malware every second. It's just mind boggling. It's impossible for the human mind to be able to mm, make a quick determination as to whether something uh, you know, mm, is, uh, so for us, uh, given that we're a company that we've been in the business of uh, malware for over 25 years, the amount of data that we have uh, is, uh, is, is phenomenal. And uh, when you look at uh, what really makes uh, uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence so crucial for us, it's really a couple of things, right? And, uh, today, uh, it's the intersection of um, you know, the, the uh, data and the uh, intersection of the power of compute. And uh, we have both. Uh, from a data perspective, we have the volumes, we have the variety, we have the velocity. And this is ideal for us to be able to make, uh, you know, to use artificial intelligence in order to, uh, you know, determine if um, there are certain behavioral patterns, it could be something else. That said, you know, you've got to remember that the, the uh, you know, the, we live in a cat and mouse kind of a world. And you know, as we make progress, the uh, the bad guys are trying to make progress. So, um, in fact, so what's happening really is uh, the bad guys are beginning to use artificial intelligence to uh, find out how we are machine learning. You know, how do you stay ahead of this game? Because uh, uh, criminals are using the same technologies that we are using. How do we make sure that they don't uh, get ahead of us, right? So uh, this is where we have something called adversarial uh, machine learning. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, aspects of how we uh, take this into account and make sure that uh, you know, our uh, the machine learning algorithms are um, um, robust and uh, rigid enough so that uh, you know, the criminals are not able to play around with the data and then uh, fox our systems and outsmart us. One thing you can say about hackers, if they want to target you, they find a way in, whether it's from your door or it's from your window. And if that doesn't work, then they'll go to the second floor and come right in and attack you. So one thing that I picked up is that um, do not set very simple passwords. Let it be a little more complex. Do not have your traditional name followed by a one, two, three, or a Rima one, two, three kind of a password. Um, you know, you can have a two-factor authentication as well when it comes to your passwords. And secondly, be a little wary of um, you know two good-sounding emails, which could be a little malicious. Is there anything else in one line? that uh, you know, a, a viewer or um, an individual has to be careful in terms of protecting its data online? It's just a combination of common sense and making sure that you're using the right basic set of tools to stay protected online. Rima, there's really nothing more to it. And common sense is like exactly what you just described, which is uh, safe passwords, strong passwords, making sure you don't click on bad links, you don't fall prey to messages that are, uh, you know, mm, uh, that'll give you a pot of gold and uh, you know basic common netiquette that you need to follow and of course uh, supported by a set of basic tools that you need because uh, you know you're not going to be able to handle everything yourself and you do need the uh, tools to tell you and warn you and make sure that you know you you're protected and i think between the uh, between a combination of these two you will be safe online Venkat, thank you very much for your time and throwing insights on how to protect your identity and your data in this digital world. Thanks again for watching Tech at Work. I, Reema Tendulkar, will be back with another episode. And remember to subscribe to our podcast on anywhere the, any of the platforms where podcasts are available. And you can also watch the video interview on YouTube. Thanks again for watching.